Welcome to Real Liberty Media, everybody. This is Vincent Easley, your host. Uh, uh, Ponder Gander, what matters. This today is extractions in black and white, and we're going back to Bundyville. From Long Reads, Oregon Public Broadcasting, Leah Satelli and Brian J. Haas and others. This is the, a look at the second season of uh, Bundyville, season two called the remnant I look at this uh, digging into the depths of depravity it's a war of the words in peace and safety the faith in worldviews and one's a religion of pieces and the other one is in pieces and uh, through this uh, picture there I just showed now that's supposed to in the uh, <laughs> doesn't line up trying to go from the actual um, publish in the uh, yeah the, the, just the uh, format but anyways, it has its meaning right there. So you might see what uh, appears to be a sword through there, and or maybe a cross. And uh, that's all meant to uh, push upon and ponder towards this uh, these ideas of the way the world works. And I say we haven't seen it, or we ain't seen nothing yet. Here's a, now I took a part of that from a song um, that Kate shared. It was, uh, we ain't got nothing yet. But I, I morphed that into, we ain't seen nothing yet. And from the from the mind of man to what man minds in the human experience. I've taken uh, also our communication from the chat. Anti, thank you. Say instruments are co of control are mostly in place and operational. Race war, riots, revolution. It need not come to this. In shades of gray. And again, that radio writing. So how you hear it, how you see it, we're looking at this uh, Long Reads, Bundyville, The Remnant. I want to start out first, in the, I'm going to move in another direction, to, well, a opposing direction, I might say, then I guess, to uh, uh, the end of uh, the second chapter from Leah. And I see that uh, Leah, and I'll back up after this, and I'm going to go back to uh, her talking to the FBI. And so I, I want to say there lies hope here that uh, through it all, what we can see where she's going and the direction uh, and hope that she can find path to uh, explore this in greater depths. Now, last two uh, paragraphs <coughs> is... Uh, she says, I can understand how people who have questions, who never get answers from their own explanations. How out here in the West, so far from where the decisions are made about how the society works, people can't figure out how to access the information they need. Everything about Keebler's case feels Orwellian. He's a racist, and it's easy to write him off. But I see how writing him off means patrolling what he thinks, and that uh, policing certain thoughts no matter how gross, means a denial of certain rights. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll check you in a minute. <clears throat> At the airport, I don't ask questions about which of my uh, liberties are being violated when I go through the security line. I don't scream and shout about the Constitution when I'm loading my laptop into their bin, or when I take my shoes off, or when I put my hands above my head in a machine that seems to suggest that can see that it can see through me for for things that maybe I don't even know that are there. Wow, I I'm gonna tell you that right there kind of uh, brings some chills. Maybe it's the air conditioner running over here, and I'm sitting here without a shirt on, or the shirt behind me that uh, I had on. It says victory over oppression. It's the Bundy Ranch Freedom Fighters, the Battle of Bunkerville, in the spring of 2014. Now, who said my name over here? Uh, Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet by uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. She shared a different song. It was earlier than that, Governor. Kate did. Okay. Now, back to Bundyville. I'm going to scroll back up, and let's go talk about this low-hanging fruit. Where's it at? It's at the beginning of... Uh, where are you at, Bill? Let's talk about Bill. There, wait, wait, wait. Is this where we're going to find... Uh, I'm looking for where Leah is talking to the FBI. I think in here. 
this is long, yes, after part two. Um, this is uh, after the militias assisted in preventing the BLM from seizing the Bundy's family cattle. Uh, Keebler, so he goes on, uh, she goes on then to uh, talk more about her meeting with Bill Keebler, whom uh, one might call low-hanging fruit. Now, before I get to that, let's, uh, as I scroll down here looking for where she's talking to the head of the FBI. Um, and she says that they put, uh, they infiltrated him. They sent uh, agents undercover and informants. And this is what I found that, and I, I know the listeners live right here in the Real Liberty Media chat are familiar with how the FBI sets up the crime. Leah goes on to talk about this in this article. Uh, other instances of uh, uh, some of these uh, Muslim extremists that, that they set up and uh, whatever, shoe bombers and all this other guys. Uh, she spoke specifically about one person in here. Uh, who, who do they get? Well, they get people that they can influence. They <laughs> stack the deck, really, don't they? Uh, according to the defense, one informant was paid $60,000 for his undercover work inside the militia. The stories the FBI agent gave to Keebler must have seemed like a, like he'd found a gold mine. Uh, Davis' stories of his expertise in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Miller positioned himself as an expert in mining explosives. Another FBI agent played the part of a successful business guy interested in funding a militia. Unlike all the other times, Keebler imagined the government conspiring to snoop on him. This time they actually were. Hmm. But he was so focused on the deep state that he didn't seem to notice what was happening right in front of his face. As the FBI surveyed Keebler, he frequently spoke about martial law. Under martial law, sick. <laughs> Under martial sick law. Yeah, Mr. Keebler expected the federal government to turn against the people. His attorney wrote in uh, his sentencing, sentencing memo, memo uh, he envisioned house-to-house -house gun confiscation and the government putting undesirable uh, and unsalvageable people in FEMA camps. You'll have to go over and read. You can also listen uh, to the podcast. So I scroll down here looking for the uh, FBI conversation. Here we go. Thank you. Central to the Patriot Movement, many are, uh, many are many, what, let me try that again, I think this is where I'm looking at, yes it is, yeah, Central to the Patriot Movement are many, many theories about people its members believed are involved in a vast conspiracy against the American people. In reporting, the most common names that came up in Patriot conspiracies, aside from Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, are BLM uh, agent Dan Love, ex-agent. Uh, yeah, agent of love. Special agent in charge of Dirty Dan with his backdoor dealings. Yes, that's correct. Who led the Bunkerville Roundup at the Bundy Ranch in 2014. And Greg Bretzing, who was a special agent in charge of the FBI's Oregon office during the occupation of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. After the events at Malheur, Bretzing retired from the FBI. Sure did with a cush job. And now he works in security, safety, and corporate affairs for a private company that builds barges and railroad cars. So, are you plotting a, a conspiracy with Dan Love against the Patriot Movement, I asked one morning last winter sitting in his office. Uh, shout out to Leah for being able to get him to actually talk. I'll tell you what happened to me in Denver, uh, for those that may not remember or forget. Um, yeah, me trying to talk to him, but they just ducked their heads. Ducking out in Denver. I'll have to gather that back up and bring in <coughs> you know, FBI Ryan English, Prosecutor Robert Shapiro, uh, Assistant Miss Wart, and uh, Burn Baby Burn, the U.S. Marshal appointed from the uh, Denver Sheriff's Office. Bretzing laughs as I continue with Leah Satilli. No, no, I do not know Dan Love. Bretzing worked for the FBI for 24, 22 years for much of that time on terrorism cases, both international and domestic. Off air, we were talking about the uh, definition of terrorism. <laughs> terrorism. 
fear, intimidation, and dread, and who these international and who these domestic ones really are. I want to know how the FBI views and defines international extremist groups differently than the uh, domestic ones. The biggest difference, according to Bretzing, is the law. There's clear status uh, statuses against violent acts for political purposes or to overthrow a government, he tells her. The FBI has squads devoted to domestic terrorism. But Bretzing said membership in any group isn't uh, what will get you, will get the feds on your trail, he says. Uh, anybody's political belief, religious belief, First Amendment rights, none of that is an issue, he says. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you can be a member of any group you want to be, and it can be pro anything or anti anything. Uh huh. That's fine. It's when those groups then take steps to commit violent acts or break the law or to do fraud. That is when the FBI and other law enforcement start to look at them. I gotta say right here and interrupt. You better pay attention in what you're doing, because where it gets you. You start issuing paper and stuff like that and signing things and blood oath or whatever. Not a good idea. Because if you want to jump in their arena, then they're going to beat you with their own rules. That's the way it works. Someone has to break the law, continuing. Or like they're going to break the law to get <coughs> the attention of the FBI. Branching is clear. The FBI does not go on fishing ex expeditions of people it doesn't like. Is that true? Is it root? Come on. I don't think it is. I think uh, Leah's going to probably tell us it ain't neither. She says that she tells Bretzing about Keebler's case. It didn't ring a bell, but when uh, when told uh, when she told him more about it, he, he says it reminds him of a notorious 2010 case in Portland in, involving the would-be Christmas tree bomber. That's the one I was trying to think of. In that case, a young man named Mohammed, 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 believed he was detonating a bomb that would have caused large-scale uh, fatalities of civilians attending the city's annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony in the center of the city. You could go on reading there. Um, see for, if I can get down here to where I want to be. I think maybe this is. I, I'll just skip the end of this part of the uh, article here. Uh, no, I got to back up. I got to back up. Here, let's start here. Having uh, undercover a agents inside is important to both effectively gather the evidence and to ensure that nothing violent actually does uh, take place. Uh, throughout, uh, uh, elsewhere in here, I believe she points out where uh, they go. Well, I know she does. She points out where they go get this low lying, uh, low hanging fruit. These people that are vulnerable to uh, suggestion. Um, Bill, Bill Keeb Keebler. Uh, Jeanette Finnegan will talk about in a video I'm going to play here in a bit um, uh, about his uh, where his role and in, in how it differs than what uh, uh, Leah here portrays in her article. Um, let's see. We, we don't have to do this. Well, it doesn't have to come to this, does it? And should they really be setting up crime? Constantly ensuring that this is something that the, ind the individual is pushing, not the government. But the reason it's important to have an agent inside as if an agent wasn't there with this in individual, then they would be taking these steps on their own, or would they? <coughs> I really wonder. Uh, the public would, uh, well, I, I've got to back up and say there are people that, that do take steps on their own. Uh, and I would example, uh, well, the, the militia on the border, say for instance, some of those people, uh, a little dog was, Look at that that guy. Uh, look at uh, uh, Screwy Louie. What's his name? Louis, uh, Louis Arthur. You know, there is these screwy guys. But do you need to get in there and uh, direct this to fund it? Or should you just like, and you got surveillance? Can't you, if you're that worried, isn't it cheaper than all that $60,000 for one guy and all the money you're spending to... Uh, um, build them up, that icing, that promise, that, that cake. The cake is a lie, right, Grimner? 
Yeah, remember the hat. Look that up. Uh, the cake is a lie. Put that in there, Grimner, in chat wh for me, would you? Where it actually comes from. From that game, that video game. Yeah, that promise at the end that uh, is not there. Just keep doing the things. And that's what it is. Absolutely, the cake is a lie. Um, but how can, how can law enforcement agencies be so sure people will go on to commit acts of violence? And what's the right way to go, go about or to go after domestic terrorists? Uh, she asked Karen Greensburg, the director of Fordham Law School Center on National Security, these questions. For years, she's been examining cases that have shown uh, that show an intersection of national security policy, human rights, and these civil liber civil liberties. Uh, Greensburg is extremely cautious of creating uh, uh, overarching laws that target domestic terrorists. Uh, Washington is looking for the for a, a domestic terrorism statute, and on to say that part of the reason is they want to be able to have uh, greater surveillance powers. Uh, there's there's laws in place now with uh, getting getting warrants uh, and so forth for surveillance, and I, I wonder. Um, <laughs> thanks, Ron. I wonder what's wrong with that. What, what's lo wrong with uh, with staying lawful and instead of going extrajudicial, extra right? Uh, I, I giggle there because uh, Rome's uh, gave me cake in uh, the chat room. It uh, gives, gives Vinny a yummy little Welsh cake and serves it with uh, some small chocolate files. That's very nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Grimner. It comes from Portal, the game, uh, the video, video, video game. The video games, ain't they the ones that's causing all the violence? That's what I hear. What about the red flag uh, laws? And what about uh, the killings, these ma these shooters? And are they ex right wing, wing extremists or uh, left wing? Uh, they're fake news. Uh, Jeanette will talk about that in that video, this fake news. And these uh, left wingers that uh, are giving, uh, well, fake news out from the mainstream media influencing people uh, yeah from the New York Times man with a rifle and body armor uh, alarm shoppers at Missouri Walmart he shows up no shots were fired he's taken custody by an armed off-duty fireman uh, Springfield Missouri that's uh, uh, if you got an antenna up out here and you can catch this uh, digital TV signal which uh, friends of mine down the road do you can pick up the Springfield Missouri News station a lot different than the one that uh, if you point your antenna in the other direction and picking up in Little Rock. So uh, interesting that that stems uh, that comes after the uh, the killing down there in uh, El Paso, who they said was a right winger, and now it's being said he's a left winger. All right, let me go back. Where am I at? I think I'm about done right here uh, with the uh, part two from season two when then I would go back over to um, the first part hold on a minute from Long Reads and uh, Leah Satili it is uh, chapter one uh, a quiet man and Jeanette talks about this because uh, here in the article they, they uh, alluded to how everybody was all involved in this plot to uh, to bomb stuff and the boy was involved in uh, this with the guy that blew himself up did I hear about this guy in 2016 I did not no nope. Leah brings this out this was kind of uh, not in the public purview from mainstream media <coughs> let me uh, let me give you their name so it was uh, Richard and wife Karen uh, Katsuki and their house was blowed up and by this feller here a name of what's his name uh, Glenn Jones <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me um, so there had some involvement as he was an employee disgruntled that uh, employee Jeanette will tell us and we'll know more about him coming here in just a minute all right did you games yeah jeez <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to say it like uh, uh, King of the Hill. What's his name? Down there in Texas. Like he says, batteries. 
Vidya Games. Vidya. 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 That's how you say it. Vidya Games. Alright. <laughs> Alright, back to where I was at. Somewhere. It's 420 somewhere. And I was at a pond or gander. Yep. Right there. Let me scroll down a bit. I admit, but from there, uh, yes, I have uh, tr what is called triggered by fake news is uh, that Jeanette Finnecombe talks about. And I'm going to put, now if you're if you're listening downstream, bit shoot, uh, or in the uh, R-Log page, the radio log here at Real Liberty Media, forward slash author, forward slash vine, uh, you'll find uh, there, well, and uh, if you're listening to Bit you can come back to the original Vine here, uh, the author Vinny or Vine that is, um, to find this link. It's a family press release of July 31st uh, from Jeanette Finnicum. It's a 10-minute video, and I'm gonna uh, play that. But at first, I'm gonna go push a button to pause, so it's not in this recording. Jeanette Finnicum asked that any of her. Um, Anything that she has out here on the YouTube, uh, get prior per permission to uh, republish. So we'll leave that for you, the listener, to go find for yourself. And like I said, it's right here in the link. And if you're at BitChute, if you're at YouTube, first of all, go to BitChute to listen. Tell uh, tell YouTube to get Bit and take you Ponder Gander to BitChute. Uh, and you can also listen here at the R Log page. And I will push pause as we Ponder Gander. Thanks, <coughs> Jeanette Finnicum. And again, that'll be in the Art Indicated Radio Log. The link for that. Uh, she talks about several things through there. Trying to associate LaVoy Finnicum with uh, domestic terrorism. Points out that he's never pointed a gun at anybody and didn't think he ought to. Now, let me let me say in here, before I come up uh, to read out news, that uh, people have said that uh, Lavoy was uh, suicide by cop. Well, and within the uh, article from Leah, she says, uh, and she talks to Lavoy's brother and other things and all this other, that she comes to say that uh, uh, he wanted to uh, be killed by the police. Well, uh, the way I see it is Lavoy uh, knew what, uh, what might come about and what would probably be by his taking a stand. Did he... Uh, did he provoke it? Well, if you look in the videos, uh, the analysis of uh, the assassination of Lavoy Finnicum, um, you can see where all these lies are, are uh, exposed. And say he was reaching for a gun. I say the gun was planted. Uh, you heard Le uh, Jeanette uh, talk about how they had uh, patrolled the, and held off the crime scene there, tracks to and from his body. Uh, the way the pistol was positioned inside his uh, denim, denim jacket. Excuse me. A lot of evidence to go to show that it was uh, planted. Was he reaching for a gun or were those tickle shots? Were they hitting him with rubber bullets? I think so. We don't have any uh, uh, what evidence exists. I don't know. They were there picking up bullet shells, uh, covering up the crime scene. These uh, Oregon State Police, the FBI team, all them guys in co collusion to covering up the crime scene. What really happened? Well, let me go back over here to the uh, Ponder Gander page. <coughs> and from Readout News, let's, uh, let's open them up here. And uh, written by, let me scroll here. Elias Alias, he says, we are deeply, gra deeply, deeply grateful to Kurt Cruz for first offering the following videos for publications. For publication, these are uh, deep analysis videos. And the list is the deadly roadblock, uh, the foam bullet, the planted gun, two shots the FBI lied about, shots with his hands in the air, courage in the line of fire, the five minutes of shooting, and the first shot. And in the Artuna Gator blog here, you'll find that. Uh, please go here. Link, and you can find all those videos over on the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Sherry, y'all ought to get over to BitChute, by the way, for when they come about to take all that stuff down one day, like they do, seems to me. <coughs> all right. Where or where? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, huh. 
I have a little uh, little play here. Should I? I guess I'll go this first. I wanted to take this kind of. It's not going to be in order as I close out, but I'll do it anyways, just like this. Uh, on the road to redemption, whether it be a killer with a conscience or this crisis crisis of con conscience, and a pause before falling, death is a post in shades of gray. Got to take a chance on you and I. It's easy to name the place to die. And then we look at, we'll come back and look at, I wish I'd have put this in order. Come back and take a punt or gander, David and Goliath. But this, uh, take a chance on you and I. Now that's where I want to uh, have a little play and poke at uh, Leah. I'm going to read this, uh, one of her, I'm going to copy this address here. So, because I'm going to scroll up after that uh, and read more. <coughs> so, she says, really grateful that uh, N.W. Qua that's at over there on Twitter and Vulture took the time to interview Ryan J. Haas and I <laughs> about Bundyville. She says it's really important for us to explore what does extremism actually look like in America. Now I copied that and uh, I went over and I took it to Pro Writing Aid for uh, to check grammar and I know that uh, to say that to interview I is not correct. It's uh, to interview me. So as a great a writer as Lee is, and me, <laughs> not so much, to go over here and be able to cr critique her writing skills is uh, that's kind of funny, right? <clears throat> as you guys over there uh, got onto me about uh, what was the word and uh, abide, yeah, it's about justice and the courts and uh, yeah, where it's not being able to uh, abide. Yeah, well, criticize me. I I like that because it makes me uh, think and uh, go find out where, how I'm wrong and in, in stating it, which is very important to be able to do, I guess. And if you're writing, um, there's different style, you know. There's one that kind of leads. And I talked about <coughs> season one of Bundyville, uh, and I got hung up about where we're at right here on the followers, because there is such a vast and wide majority of uh, the people that they call poots, and uh, I'd be Vinnie the Pooit if I can do it here in radio writing. <laughs> well, well, back back to this uh, twit from uh, Leah. She's uh, lots of words here. Really, you're not supposed to use. Not supposed to use. According to what I'm finding out about writing, and here she's got it in there twice. And actually. Uh, I guess it's, it's it's all leading and building to uh, <coughs> this uh, well, the way that uh, she'd lead you to believe. Is anybody unbiased? Certainly not. Uh, I see that you're going, you're you're coming along, Leah. You really are. I hope that you will find to dig deeper into the depravity of where we find ourselves. Let me hit to the home and go to the top because it's pretty close here. This last one. So I'm hoping, well, Ryan and uh, Leah, they never re they never re respond. And, hey, I can go do a screenshot. And he's showing in the date where uh, they had the date, the the, uh, the month wrong in their uh, upcoming output of uh, Bundyville as it was being released and had it in June instead of July. Not even a thank you, Leah, of all things. But <laughs> I, I think about back in uh, Las Vegas at the federal courthouse and uh, that they um, uh, um the the sketch reporter Hecto just looking at at me like I'm a terrible monster is, that poots <laughs> you should unblock me Hecto from Twitter I should go ask you I guess and uh yeah here we go this let me click on it so we've got <laughs> some five-star and one-star ratings here. Uh, female radio journalist achieved unlocked voice deemed shrill. From Leah Satilli, a picture that I guess she has screen captured that. Turn down the shrill. Turn down the shrill, please, or get a new host. The host voice is rough on the ears. Says Camping Brian. <laughs> I don't think she's hard to listen to at all. I, I think uh, the podcast is uh, very uh, easily listened to. 
Yes, I did say easily. Uh, hooked from the word go. Uh, that it's a five star. Where the previous uh, was from, actually from sweating, trip something, bro. However you say that. And this one was actually from Camp and Brian. It gets five star. A wonderful, albeit terrifying, look at the dark section of American citizenry. And back to one star from Vader78. Horrible podcast filled with left-wing hate speech. And a podcast where the reporter is typing, trying, uh, let's see, is trying push her own. Yes, you need a two in there. Uh, push her own so-called anti-hate agenda. She can't help but let her own intense hate, caps, for the right. Christianity and basically anyone who doesn't agree agree with her uh, course through her court with her course through her words and gush out her pores. So calling reporting like this is what is helping to stir up the violence in our country. This podcast should be banned for hate speech. Shut up, banned. What? Banned speech. I give you less than one star, sir. Uh, poorly wit written research. Much of the story is missing and many facts are fabricated to fit the journalist's story. Uh, this is another example of OPB, Oregon Public Broadcasting, and fake news inciting hate. Poorly done. I mean, a lot can be said uh, to all of that. Certainly, uh, in this uh, pooch versus the patties. I wanted to share that. So, uh, there's there's good and bad in there, and even in the bad, you can pull out something that uh, actually rings. But uh, this is obviously, I, I guess, on a, a left site. Now, Jeanette said too that uh, privilege of uh, of media of press. There, there's no privilege there. It's for everybody, no matter how bad or poor or terrible things that they say. Be it for you or again you, it, uh, it has to be said. Without that, I mean, what do we hope to uh, be able to, uh, how, how can we uh, hope to get through understanding this uh, this world that we're in? Mark Pitcarriage, uh he talked about his grandma living down there in El Paso and more. Let's see, what was I uh, going to do here now? Next, I think I've uh, brought a lot of it all together that I had intended. Talked to there. Um, oh, let's see, wait. There is, there is. Let me open up. Where is that? From Shauna Cox. He sent me this. Thank you, Shauna. And this comes from uh, Paul Stramner, not Stram, Strammer, Paul Strammer dot net, uh, Lincoln County Watch. There's a video in there, so I'll have to come back and bring this page into the uh, the uh, radio log here. Talk about one El Paso shooter was a left wing progressive and not a white supremacist, and talked about that earlier. So I'll have to bring that along. And what's this one over here? Uh, oh yes. Uh, Red Flag Laws and TAPS Act uh, from Chris Ann Hall. Is it for uh, further ponder gander, a uh, further ponder gander <laughs> for you to do on your own? I'll pop them in uh, too. This R log. I think, I think, I think, I think. Oh, here's one that's of significance, I guess, too, from uh, Oregon Public Broadcasting. Uh, Coos Sheriff acknowledges monitoring of a fossil fuel pro project opponent. Um, is that wrong to do? Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> I guess maybe you might say that they didn't insert any uh, undercover sheriffs to uh, to get him to go do something like. I don't know what what would they do? Uh, blow up the dam. Uh, same type of people that you know want the dams removed down there. It's crazy. You're not going to protect them. But there's uh, Hal and, and I, most uh, especially Hal Anthony from behind the woodshed here at Real Liberty Media, has talked about the uh, the uh, pipeline up there in the Dakota, the Dakotas, the no uh, the no dapple movement up there, and where uh, where that went wrong. And you know, there's people in prison there too. They gathered them up. If you're going to stand, you need to learn to stand right, certainly, and uh, guard your words. Uh, 
uh, and, and filter through the stalking horse because when anybody's gets involved in something <clears throat> like uh, any of these issues from here in Coos County, whether it be left or right, uh, their their people are, are being inserted, certainly, uh, into the movement and to steer and direct it, uh, whether within or without, through uh, influence of public opinion. Definitely want to keep your eyes open and uh, your mind's eye as well. What, uh, what lies in the mind of man? And what will man, the man of mind, the mind of man, mind? Jumble that up for you. Uh, where else do I have? Uh, <coughs> let's see. Let's see. I, I think I'm actually done, pretty much. Uh, let's see. Here's from uh, Tom Lockover. I do actually want to include that. Uh, just say no to gun control. At least uh, two out of three shootings uh, have crystal clear evidence that they had individuals who came forward in the garlic fest and one man, a personal friend of ours at RTR Truth Media, who had been trying for some time to lawfully carry but was denied. Well, he is now dead huh, after shooting his son to save his life. What? After shooting, after shielding his son to save his life. What? I... I Tom posted me this, but I didn't get a chance into to taking a closer look here. Uh, we're going to have to definitely open this up from Tom at RTR Truth Media. Well, <coughs> have to look a bit closer at that, and uh, I'll leave this also in the authentication for you to follow. Uh, it's talking about ten bills and and on. And said, uh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this for you to come to find yourself because I haven't read it either, and I will have to." From Tom, I'm correspondent with RTR Truth Media right here at RealLibertyMedia.com. RTR Truth Media, check them out. Tom Lockavar Stewart, friend of mine from Bunkerville, been in contact over these years. He also went on up to the Oregon standoff, the Tamaya Refuge, and. Oh, yes, I'm not done, am I? That's right. Let's see. There are, on both sides, there are those that accept death uh, for their, their goal to preserve a life, uh, one that at least the way they perceive it should be, or maybe even make it uh, move in that direction. We see that uh, certainly from both sides. So uh, how do we understand this world if, uh, if it was on a plate before us? It's to be breakfast, lunch, or dinner? And is it the food or the time of day? And is, uh, is it the same time for everyone at the same time? What if you slept in and until dinner time and you ate, and you ate dinner and it would be your breakfast? Or what if you decided to go ahead and have bacon and eggs and then would that not be breakfast? Well, that's kind of the convolution that we see when uh, we're looking at this world that we're in, right? Everybody has a different perspective on it. Um, David and Goliath. So this is uh, from a video, TED Talks. Uh, he's talking about this other idea of modern medicine and uh, Goliath and uh, acromegaly, I believe is the word. And now he talks about it being apparent strength and it can also be uh, the source of uh, great weakness. So how do we understand these people that are I guess that you might say our opposition. And if you don't know the story of David and Goliath, I don't know who wouldn't. But, uh, the little shepherd in the great big uh, Palestine. Um, and I think that really does do it. When we think about where we are and where we're going. What kind of world do you want? And where do you lie your focus? All right. I really am gonna. I'm gonna. St I'm gonna stop the recording, but I'm gonna play out. To, I have a. I'm adding some songs. I have them added here. Um, to play out, play out, and the list uh, will be in the radio log from uh, songs of Lavoie. Stick around. This is the Freakers Friday, y'all. Grammy Mary comes up tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by. The uh, Freakers Ball, y'all, with Grimner and Moose Girl at 11 p.m. 
Tomorrow at uh, noon Eastern will be the Dork Table, po possibly uh, with a captured co-host, a co-hostage, I guess you might say, with uh, Mr. Flash somebody. Come back around Sunday for the Blues with Grimner. Some fast-fingered fun of playing trivia right here in the chat. You'll see the link inside the uh, VR log right there. And uh, followed by Hal Anthony coming from behind the woodshed. The man I talk about, listen to quite often. Come on along. Well, you know, I, I see my volume levels have been low this whole time, looks like. I hope it, uh, it ain't too low. I didn't hear nobody say no. Anyway, so, yes, yeah, right here behind the woodshed at noon o'clock on the left coast. Monday, Grim Leftovers at 7 p.m. and Tuesday. Well, it's about 2 in the morning here when uh, Flash Somebody comes back in uh, perfect world. Grammys again at 7 Wednesday, Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Flash Somebody has got what a deal, such a deal. It's good and cheap, and you can get 20% off. That's right, 20% off right here at RealLibertyMedia.com. Thanks. Come on back. Listen along. Hope you've uh, enjoyed the Ponder Gander. Thanks again.